for example. Uh, if I have a gig where I have to have a guy who reads, who knows uh, this kind of music, that kind of music, I'm down to like four guys. And if I need a guy who is a progressive event, and it's going to be very radical, I'm down to maybe one guy. So, I mean, that's how we're going to do this. Uh, we're not talking necessarily about comparing people's artistry, good, bad, that's not even important here. It's the fact, however, you want to express yourself, if you get paid for your work, if you get paid he heavily, or if you can't make a penny from your work, it doesn't matter. Uh, we just, you consider yourself an artist, and you want to be part of this group, that's all that matters. We're not qualifying anybody. We're just going to try to network, help each other, and then if we think, need to find someone who fits in here, they'll fit in. So here, for example, is a, a person I've seen a few times, but I don't know real well, so we're going to learn more about her now. This is uh, uh, Mary Ann Dunmire. Mary Ann Dunmire. Um, I uh, don't really consider myself a real musician, because I don't really make any effort to make a living at it. Um, I took some piano lessons when I was in elementary school, and then... Um, nothing more with that, and uh, sometime in the 90s, when I was <coughs> a little older, I uh, fell in with a, with a group of people that played Irish trad music, and picked up a guitar and started doing that, and uh, also that uh, I've, I've been kind of a lefty all my life. Um, I was in, well, you know, anti-war stuff when I was in college, and uh, uh, Community organizing in Southwest Detroit. There was a group back in the 60s, uh, back in the 70s and 80s, called the Michigan Community Organization. And some people that have been around forever uh, might remember that. Uh, and um, you know, just uh, in and out as kind of life allowed, uh, and got involved mostly with um, the uh, Occupy movement, and kind of stayed in with that. Uh, which leads into all of those things that sprung from Occupy, the eviction defense, and uh, water rights, and you know, all those sorts, sorts of things. Um, as far as music goes, um, uh, I, I still love Irish trad. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun, and I play it whenever I get a chance. Um, as far as uh, Social, political, uh, my, probably my greatest influence is Saikon, who is a labor organizer and a singer-songwriter out of uh, North Carolina. Yeah, um, and uh, so I do a lot of his material and a lot of the pretty much standard union stuff and, and other things like that. So I have a song and we'll try and do it. Really quickly, so it fits in with your time schedule. I know Mike's day, you want me to hold Mike's work? Um, I think I, I think I, 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 I've, I've sung over noise at the Gaelic League without a mic, right. so I. <laughs> 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 so I. <laughs> in France, the Marseille is a song in memory of a time when starving people roses walked up borders so blind. Scottish clans were massacred and still the piper played. Never Barry died for Ireland, but his song is sung today. In the mines of Harlan County, for the Union fight was won. We heard the voice of Florence Reese ask, which side are you on? In cities, angry workers held a wobbly standard high. In the streets, they marched to Joe Hill song. A singing battle cry. Voices of struggle must be heard once again. Voices together, every woman, child, and man. From fight is my fight, together we are strong. Voices of struggle shout the power of song. The voice of women marching should always once again the sisterhood and not guns to seek equality with men so many years, so many tears and still we fight the lies now victory is at hand with bread and roses still that 
cry Once again the madness screams Through every tabloid page Our burns through TV screens And helpless screams to rage Till death machines and crimes against humanity Have ceased Wherever people gather We must raise a voice for peace We have a gentleman who I've known for quite a long time, especially around the Cuban activist solidarity groups. Uh, Kenneth Snodgrass is a diff difficult guy to pinpoint because as an artist, he's a photographer, uh, a painter, uh, a videographer, a filmmaker, a uh, poet, a writer, traveler, everything. So let's uh, come up here and let's welcome Ken Snodgrass. And once again, I want to mention that we're not qualifying the artistry, and we're also not qualifying your politics. We're all left, it's all progressive as far as we go. Some are anarchists, some are socialists, communists, whatever you want to call yourself. I think we're all to the left. And if we can work together, that's all we need to know. If we can't work together, then we won't. But let's try to work together. So here's a... <laughs> what was funny about that? Mounted that on there as art that I have up on my 
on my wall at this point, so I, that's one way that I took advantage of that. Um, taking the photography and putting it on, say, an African thing. And then to follow along with that, I saw this, this, um, this, um, this, um, this piece of art that I saw like in the paper, like there, and I decided that was what I wanted to do, but I changed it, and then I made that something like four foot by four foot that I made um, and then expanded on what that was in regards to just a, a, a piece of art that's out of metal. I turned around and did that out of multi different mat boards to capture the beauty of that. Um, I had said in my book, one of them was called From Victimization to Empowerment to Challenge Time African American Leadership. That's how that looks. And the other book that I have is um, The World As I Have Seen It, My Travels Around the World which is a, a large photo book that has some explanation by some of the places I've traveled to, which is available. And, and plus my skill comes from this um, case which I use to um, carry my stuff in is a case I made. Whoa. So my art is, you know, goes in that. And I skate, so one of the things that's real difficult in regards to skating is sliding. So what happens is I, I can videotape the sliding, but I never had pictures of it. So what I did was videotape it, and I cut it all up and then made it into this kind of image. So that's something that I felt was really creative that I wanted to do. That I took advantage of uh, that in that way. Now, you can guess this, what this is. This is a little Rubik cube. cube. And I felt I wanted to be creative with that. So what I did was um, my, my pictures, oh my you have to just hold it on, on the side and you just show it, but don't, don't pass it along. Because the pictures, the pictures will tend to fall off. But it's, I did it like that, so that Ruby Cube has, has all my little pictures. I had to take time to figure out how to take the pictures again so they would be smaller. So that's 9, 9, 6, 54 pictures on there. And it still moved, but I don't, I don't want to try to um, use it for that purpose. And so, and the last thing, Dale, if you help me, okay, these are pictures, some of the things that I took. This was um, during the May Day celebration in Cuba, and, and this was um, one of the women's um, segment that had came through the particular march. This here was taken, where did we go? Um, yeah, in Venezuela. This was, um, we, have, we have went to Venezuela and then at this, we went to some very villages where it was open up for what I can say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I saw these young kids was out there and they was, they was really, you know, um, happy and so forth. So I decided to get a picture in with them and that came out really nice. And I, I think it's one thing to take pictures, but if you are, you have to be an artist in regards to doing it. Or you just have plain looking pictures. So I had another. I had the opportunity to go to Cairo, Egypt, and this I, I loved. Had an opportunity to capture this, so that I could talk about not only being there, but I felt that this is again one of the wonders of the world. And back to Cuba, this was the May Day celebration, and right here, one of the people from the United States is over there in the exile, Asada Shakur. And so what happened? I got to meet her, and every time I went someplace, she was right there. So she's right, right there. And there, and, uh, unfortunately, I, this I have pictures I took of her, but this one, if I'm up there, I couldn't have took it from downstairs. <laughs> but this was one of the things that was very important for being um, at Cuba. I think I went to Cuba about seven, eight times now. Again, this this was another event they was having in Venezuela, <laughs> and this was um, one of the areas where they were building different homes because they were having constantly having mudslides because people were living on the hills and every time there was a real heavy heavy rain the, a lot of their homes would get washed out and it was really um, the homes were not done out of bricks or anything so the government was trying to relocate people so they wouldn't and some people had a big argument about it and wanted to fight over it but they were trying to re re relocate them so they wouldn't have that same trauma each time it rained hard and at the same time building better homes. So this was the whole activity they was carrying out over in Venezuela. And I think these, these, yeah, these others are based on Venezuela, so I don't need to go through those. 
But that, this last, let me see. Oh, I went to after, and I guess I was there going to, um, let me see, what is something on? It was um, Ghana. I went to Ghana, and, and when I went over and saw this, this uh, huge mansion, that uh, old castle, when I came over the side, I looked out at the, at the ocean, and I saw this particular picture, and I knew that was something I wanted to capture. So this is a um, picture from there. And this is one with Asada and Asada. And that's it. Thank you. Ken Snyder. Wow. <laughs> well, obviously, uh, Kenneth, you've been very active and, uh, and artist in many ways. We, we could have an evening of just your stuff, to be honest. Uh, there's people who have dedicated their life to artistry. And, uh, Ken, I've known for many years. I didn't know him. I just learned some new stuff about him, too. And it's just amazing what he does. I knew he traveled a lot. And I knew he was a photographer. He went to Cuba. <clears throat> but skating and all, and woodworking, and I mean, this, these are all skills. I mean, these are... Oh, really? Skills placement, okay. So, Kenneth Snodgrass, we're going to have another event someday with just his artistry. I'm sure we'll do that. Thank you so much. Um, and next on the list will be, uh, we have uh, Hassan, and then Felix, and Paula, and Sophia, and Ralph. That's it. So, next is Hassan. And, um, as far as our activism, I said it doesn't matter where you are on the left, we're going to try to find a way to work together. And it also doesn't matter how active you are, because some people are very active and other people can't be and want to be, because they have to work all day or survive or whatever reasons they have. Everybody's in a different point in their life, and we know that uh, we just we know you're an activist because you're here, and we know you want to do something with your artistry, and that's what we're trying to find a way to work all these things together. And here's a gentleman who uh, retired many, many years ago, so I've never known him as a worker. You know, he's always been an activist, 24-7. <laughs> Hassan Duesh. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I am a Palestinian, and uh, I went through the, uh, what we call the Palestinian Holocaust, Nakba, uh, in 1948 when I was six. I've displaced my home, deprived my mom and dad, etc. I came here and uh, went to college to get uh, educated. And uh, before that, I was offered a full ride uh, in return of having us renounce our right to, as refugees, to go back to our homes from which we were evicted. So the family meeting decided, no, no, we'll turn that down. So you, I came to the States to work my work way through college and to, uh, having turned that down. Now, that's one uh, phase. The other phase is the Vietnam War. I was not an activist. I was sort of like, interested. But the Vietnam War, I, I remember the pivotal point was a New York march against the war that I decided to attend or participate in um, at Dwayne State University. And uh, I went, and here I'm chanting for the first time out loud, hey, hey, LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? I can complete the chant now. Back then, I couldn't, because I would start really sobbing before I could finish the chant. So that was a pivotal moment for me, as a Palestinian, to become activists in Palestinian defense, uh, Vietnam and Palestine. I could not distinguish as to the children who are being killed. Now, so fast forward, I have been an activist practically all my life. And uh, driven to, as if reunite with my mother, reunite with my country as a refugee, through my activism in fight for justice, through also my super sensitivity as a person who can feel things much or events more so than the average person, I'm not bragging. In fact, that was a handicap a lot for me to excel in my 
corporate world. So I started dabbling with poetry in the 70s and the 80s, and I wrote a poem about my daughter who was three, and the title of the first line was, Daddy, Daddy, why do you like the meetings? And it goes on. It was very touching because even when I was writing it, I was sobbing. Went on never to take my poetry seriously because there's no time. I was a graduate student, I was raising a family, working full time, and also a full time activist. So, talking about uh, burning candle on both ends, multiple ends. So, I still wrote poetry, you know, and I published some, but I never really took it seriously until. Now, uh, I'm thanks to Bill uh, inviting me to some place in Washington, D.C., where art is relevant to struggle. So we attended that both. It's then that I realized that the art then becomes my communication medium to win other people who are not into analysis. And I'm okay with analysis. It's the art then that I have to sort of migrate into to start taking myself seriously in poetry. And I recited then on WDT and other places. But uh, I'm not going to recite tonight, today. But I just wanted to share with you where I came from and what I, and just one last thing. I end up relating most of all, again, not just the Vietnamese, the Chiapans, and also the African Americans, the slavery period, and also the, still the present day, and the Native Americans. And they go in lines in my poetry much more so often. So that's who I am. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Hassan.